how many how many shows do you end up working on like simultaneously is it only like one at a time or do you do you like have multiple shows that you're being worked on it depends on time to time but usually two shows at a time for animation okay. for planning um as a producer i'm working like five six different shows right now oh wow <laughs> how do you like just organize that all like uh i mean i have some assistant producers right or some projects i'm more um, emotionally involved in right so right, right. invested in is, is there <laughs> so i don't give a shit about this show too much give it to the assistant <laughs> <laughs> no every show to uh, orange matters oh, of course of yeah, course you yeah. can't miss i mean we we spent <laughs> <laughs> he 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 miss. He said it. <laughs> that's why they're the goat <laughs> i agree actually i agree i agree, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. it takes three years for us to develop the show so have you ever said no to be like i don't I, I, I don't think we would we could do this or i don't know i mean there's a lot of times we just say that Okay, okay. I is mean, it, is it due to like personal reasoning or like more like a technical like limit or- I mean, it's mostly technical. Above. Right. So, I mean, if they were giving this certain manga and there's like hundred, as I said, there are hundred characters yeah. on right, it. Right, right. We simply can't do this. Mm. Is, is there any like dream shows that you want to work on oh. or that you would love? Yeah, is there a show where it's adapt? like Orange, if Orange did this show, yeah. it would be a banger. I'm working on this, so I can't say it. Oh, <laughs> okay. you, can, you, can, you can tell us after the show, man. Like, we all know. <laughs> damn. Oh, no, I'm excited because- <laughs> yeah. So when is the show ending? I, I, I just want to know right now. <laughs> uh, a, a question that uh, is, is often asked nowadays is, um, you know, because you do a lot of 3D animation and right now there's a massive conversation around like AI and all that stuff. Mm. Do you feel that there's any possibility in the future where it, it somehow helps make anime or helps the production aspect in any form? Mm. Or could it be seen as perhaps a, a detriment to the current model that 3D studios might have? I mean, there's there's the, there's many issues revolving AI. There's the morale issue, there's yep. the legal issue, and I can't even specify which issue they have right now. Yeah, um, it's, it's a lot. Many there's issues. A lot, a lot yeah. issues. Yeah. There, yeah. I mean, unless we're able to feel comfortable with that, mm -hmm. um, we're not going to utilize it as a tool. I mean, everything eventually is a tool for us. Yeah. yeah. But without that issue solved, we can't really use it. Yeah, because like, what is the general vibe around AI in like the Japanese animation industry right oh. now? Because we have a vibe from Twitter. Well, mm -hmm. you know, that, <laughs> I mean, that's Twitter's so, vibe is always bad. Yeah. yeah, that's the only thing I actually know because oh, really? I don't interact with the rest of the industry anymore. Oh, okay. Because okay. to us, it's about how can we make ourselves better? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, right. I mean, using other part of the industry is not really a reference. Don't, don't have enough time to care yeah. about the rest of the industry. It's <laughs> like, <laughs> so we just here to make bangers, damn it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, it sounds selfish, but I mean, it's our problems that we're facing right oh, now. Of course, yeah. yeah. You got to. So yeah. How do I solve our problems, not yeah. other people's yeah. problems? No, definitely. Has, has this conversation cropped up in Studio Orange at all? Like the a conversation of AI? We always have the conversation, but right now is not yet. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, mean, yeah. Maybe in the future if things settle, but mm. not yet. Right. I guess because there's always like, you know, softwares that have like smart tools, right? Like there's some things that'll. You know, you can tell it, hey, I mean, like <laughs> in a weird way, I guess like fill on paint, right? Like, yeah. You fill the whole thing. It's yeah. like in between all, the, it's like, I guess there's always that line that's kind of difficult with some tools that make doing certain kind of things in animation or whatever easier that would technically be classed as AI, but on, I guess morally using the whole, yeah. take everyone's fucking input and then blur something out. Yeah. I suppose it's kind of like the, getting that balance of tools that are useful and are made ethically uh, between the whole, let's make an anime for me. Yeah, it's like, true. to yeah. what point are you, is it morally right to automate the process? Yeah. Right, where I mean, it's like, right if now, it's too automated, then is it even it's not a so person making it's it? It's more so like, how, how is that automation being done? Right, like, right. What, what is it learning from? What mm. is it maybe even stealing from, right? Mm. Yeah, mm. Um, I guess that's the, the moral quandary of it all. I mean, yeah. right now, I mean, we develop two, our own tools. Oh, so, wow, really? I mean, not AI tools, just tools. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, we have experience of 10, then we make a tool, then that will create us a, a equivalent of experience of three. So we have it off to our new grads, then use that, then they instantly start off from three. Oh, so oh, okay, that's okay. the our way of thinking. What, but, do you mind elaborating on what tools that you have? So, I mean, uh, one would be the uh, automorph face. So one of the things is that CG, and hand drawn, the most dif major difference is that CG is three dimensional, hand drawn yes. is not. Yes. Um, it might look th three dimensional, but the comfort level doesn't have to be three dimensional to create comfort. So, right. a lot of the manga 
is actually not three dimensional. <laughs> it looks realistic, yeah, but it's not three dimensional. Yeah, because mm. like I guess there's there's always like the uh, challenge of you know th having a three D model um, is great, but making sure that it looks good on camera, I guess, which is two dimensional, whole, which is a you know a two dimensional mm. thing, and you have to create a like a specific tool just yeah. for that. So we have a tool called Automorph where we point the camera to a character and that model will just automatically warp. Wow. So it could just decide just completely warp this way to make sure that on the camera, oh, it looks really shit. natural. So oh, yeah. like sideways, uh, manga characters will have two eyes where physically it's impossible because they're 90 degrees. Yeah. yeah. But in our own Automorph, it automatically warp it so that Oh like shit! That. Okay, oh. okay. So you're kind of playing around with, so you're morphing the face to play around with perspective, yes, to yeah. make it look more naturally, like I guess two dimensional, right? Yeah. So as as a, as you guys develop that in house. In house. Yeah. Oh wow, that's, that's cool. Because cool. as experience, we know how to do it by hand, but yeah, we're physically changing the model every single shot. That's so it's like kind of like much. almost like presets a little bit. It's yeah. like okay, yeah. if camera here, warp the face around. Yeah. Because have you seen the behind the scenes of like some of the JoJo openings? Uh, I haven't. Actually, no. Oh, because like, <laughs> I th there are some those shots. Are 3D as well. Yeah, right? th those yeah. those those are three D, and there are some shots with some like the poses, and you there's like been some screenshots of like what it looks like out of like the camera perspective, and like I remember seeing one where I I, I think it's like Joseph's hand was like just like warped like ridiculously when he was doing like one of the poses. <laughs> it looks it looks so ridiculous uh, when you just change the perspective yeah. just a little bit, mm. but on camera. Looks really cool. Yeah, I guess uh, that's one thing I wanted to ask is like when you guys wanted to, you obviously, you know, the main goal with Orange is to be like, all right, how do we make the 3D animation look as pristine and as comfortable for people who are more used to just watching 2D animation as possible? Uh, when it came to that, like, obviously there's been like past and different studios who have done 3D animation with varying success. Have you ever like gone to like look at some of the, maybe the older shows that have used maybe a, a little more like primitive 3D to kind of like get a hint of like, okay, maybe if we work on this, then it won't end up like this show. Or like, do you use it as a reference to be like, okay, this is what not to do. So let's not do what they did in this show. And instead try and fix that in our show. It's more the case like it's actually trial and error on their own. Thing. Right. So we right. try it, start making it, and it doesn't work. Then we keep go back to the scratch board, do it again. So you never look back at like old shows to be like, oh, that three D sucks. <laughs> Not really. Okay, I mean, <laughs> that's good to know. <laughs> I mean, there's actually a lot of things to focus on. I mean, if they're doing people, other people are doing better. Mm. Then it's more time. It's more better to use on analyzing that. Right. Yeah. Right. So I find it really interesting. You use the word comfort uh -huh. when watching animation. That's seems it kind of makes sense why you would say the word comfort but it seems very unusual to describe animation as being comfortable right but i suppose when we talk about 3d where often the major complaint is that it's it looks weird the uncanniness yeah. Yeah. yeah so what is it that like why do some shows just not get that right like what is the main thing that is the common mistake that happens when we're talking about 3d animation because it's 3d yeah yeah it's 3d well, wait, 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 it's, why is that bad? Not, I'm, I'm, I don't so, get it. I mean, they're trying to make it look something that's 3D, not 3D. Right. So that causes uh, a comfort. Right. right. Mm. So and it's kind of like a uh, uncanny, kind of like an uncanny valley effect. Mm. So it's a little bit different from the uncanny valley that Pixar and stuff ran, ran into right, first. Right. But since we're trying Toon Shade, then we run into a different uncanniness. What's Toon Shade? Uh, Toon Shade is basically the cell look, the right. hand drawn type of look right, that right. we do in 3D. Okay. So. Do you specifically try to, I guess, emulate the anime style? Do you, do you want your shows to be seen like a 2D show or kind of like something a bit different from like your typical 2D anime? Um, we start out, I mean, when we started doing animation, it's just whatever we able to do at the time. Yeah, yeah. We started out as a work for hire for other hand-drawn studios. Right. So we're required to look, look something, create something that blends into their yeah, art style. So yeah, that's because, where we started out. Yeah, because you guys worked, uh, like co-worked on Black Bullet, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like, what what was the main role of Studio Orange in that show? Uh, I can't really was remember. It like backgrounds and stuff, or there should be some enemies. I think that appeared in Black Bullet. That right. Were CG. That so was CG. Oh, okay. Did. Yeah, it was before my time. So sorry. Right. No. No. Okay. That's okay. okay. Yeah. Do you, do you do less of that work? That kind of work now in terms of like working on 
other shows uh, in terms of like 3D CG elements and now do you most, mostly focus on your own stuff? Yeah, I mean, focusing on more, more our own stuff was our dream. Okay. So we mainly did that. But I mean, sometimes we have some open time. So okay. in that time, so we work for hire for other studios still. So I'm, I'm curious, was Hoseki no Kuni your first like fully Studio Orange producer? Yes. Okay. How did that come about? Were you, was that so, when you um, were working there? It was actually how the project started was before any producer existed at Orange. Oh, okay. Um, it was the the producer for Beastars and Trigun who wanted to do Land Lustrous at Orange. Right, mm. right. And then um, my partner, Waki, was called in from Studio Chizu who did, did like uh, Hosoda Mamoru's movie. Oh, sure. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes. So he's the first producer to exist in Orange. Oh, okay, okay. Oh. And, and I kind of like, it, it must have been, I guess, daunting to be like, yeah, we're just going to do a 3D produced anime now. We've never. Never, Especially never, when never like Horsik and Okuni came out and I think it was at like the peak of the 3D anime equals bad stigma, <laughs> yeah. right? And then all of a sudden you have a fully 3D anime, Land of Lustrous, which, you know, at the time had a very dedicated like manga fan base as well, right? Yeah. I'm sure like, did, did, did you guys like get any initial backlash when it first came out or were people yeah. like pleasantly surprised about how, it? How did you I think no one really expected anything until it came out? Right. Mm. Yeah, how did it I, came out suddenly? So yeah. how did you convince the producers to be like, yeah, okay, yeah, trust us, trust us. <laughs> we, we, we haven't got anything to uh, anything to prove ourselves, but trust our us. resume is <laughs> practically empty, <laughs> but we can do it. <laughs> Actually, we did some character animation before uh, that illustrious, but not as a as right. a non work for hire. Right. Okay. So. Did you have to like? Because I, I guess like my. The first thing that comes to mind is I remember like I saw a documentary of when Jurassic Park was being made. Mm. There was a conversation about whether we should do these dinosaurs in a, you know, a stop motion or in 3D. And the VFX company had to make like just a showcase of what they could do. Did Studio Orange need to do something similar as well going into it? No, I mean, from the start was that it was already decided that they wanted to do it in 3D. Right. And they wanted to oh. do it land lustrous at Orange. So the producer's job is like figure out <laughs> <laughs> we have this daunting task for you. Figure your shit out. <laughs> like what the fuck? I, I compared to I mean I guess 2D anime has something kind of similar where I imagine that with technology improving it it makes it easier. Was there like a was there like big leaps at all in the past like since Land of the Lustrous that have kind of made it easier or uh made production smoother? Well we've done in the past is a lot easier because we put it into tools. Right. But with, because of that time that we have, we're challenging new stuff. It's never easy for any show. Right, shows. yeah, mm. I've, I've, I've noticed like, I, it feels like to me at least, if from every show you guys have produced, you've always stepped up in some different ways. Yeah. So even if you made a banger show already, you're like, how do we how do we do this better? How do we do this better? Yeah, because like like I I didn't think you guys could top B stars, and you did. <laughs> Thank you. Like, it was it was nuts. Like, oh god. Yeah. yeah. Episode. I, I don't even want to know how long episode twelve. Oh my of, god. Uh, Trigun took to produce because that, that, that last nuts. that last fight scene episode twelve is nuts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll go watch it. Actually yeah. insane. Yeah.